Home Friendship Group Study. We've been looking at the series God, Our Judge and King. And tonight we're going to look at, specifically, at Samson's cry. So uh, let's, let's turn to the scriptures to begin with in the book of Judges, chapter 15, 18 to 19. <coughs> Uh, these these verses are just out of the, the main text for tonight, which is Judges 15, 1 to 20. So let's read 18 and 19. And he was sore athirst, and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hands of of the uncircumcised, but God clave a hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout, and when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof in in Kachnor, which is in Lehi unto this day. So I, I do recommend that you read the whole text, text sometimes, I'll repeat it, Judges 15, 1 to 20. But what is it that this lesson wants us to realise? And that is our need for God at all times. And the truth for our life, though God has empowered me and you, with his spirit, I will cry out to him during times of distress. You see, the great, the great lie of Satan is that in convincing us that there are times when God will not hear our cry. But we are his children. He will hear our cry. So, as you realise, the lesson tonight is centred around Samson. In the light of this story about Samson, we ask ourselves, how can I utilise the power of God he has placed in my life? How can we use the power of God which has been utilised in our lives? But let me just say, before we open the Bible and talk about this story, or any other story. We must understand the narrative is not there just for a story. But as we read it, we must understand that the examples that are given are those to help us to understand what we should do and what we shouldn't do. Your children love the stories, but even when we read those stories to our children, we should take out of that what God wants to say, and that is what we should do, what we should be, what we should not do, and so on. So, for myself, when I read the account of Samson's life, I cannot help but wonder how he managed to get his name in the list of heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. But he is there, he's mentioned. Not much is mentioned, but his name is mentioned. So by going to Hebrews chapter 11, 32 to 34, we read, And what shall I say more? What shall I more say, says the writer? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed vibrant in fight, turned the flight of the enemy, enemy, 
sorry, of the armies of the aliens. So regardless of his mistakes, and some of Samson, Samson made some big mistakes, we must remember that in the end, his life glorified God. Every one of us have probably read uh, stories about archaeologists, how they have uh, uncovered amazing artefacts that uh, reveal information that have been covered up. And, uh, and then we can begin to understand the history of the past. Also, the ancient writings, for instance, in the land of Israel, on stones that were placed in houses. Those stones, uh, cornerstones, uh, served as a memorial for the battles of great kings, uh, and otherwise we would not have known uh, of what these great kings did. And, and the great great kingdoms that they had, which had long disappeared. Then also entire libraries of ancient writings which rem have remained hidden or were hidden until uh, these modern times when all of a sudden uh, subways and other building projects brought them to light. In those cases, it was construction rather than archeology span that brought the information uh, to us. Then, of course, <laughs> we hear of stories of those who bought things in garage sales. And after purchasing something for a pittance, eventually realized that what they had purchased was of tremendous value, in some cases, priceless. I did hear of somebody who went to a garage sale and bought a dusty painting that had been stored, uh, and it turned out to be uh, uh, painted by a very famous painter. So some of these, these treasures, uh, the owner didn't realise their price. They didn't realise they actually had a treasure sitting in their dusty shed. And uh, when it was dusted off and, and eventually Praised, they realized they had now purchased a very highly expensive possession. In thinking about these examples, we often don't realize the present value of knowing Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit that is in us. And that we can overcome at times of, of fear, at times of uh, sickness, and times of distress. We can overcome if only we will cry out to our God because we have sometimes that unrealized power already within us to touch God. We have an almighty God, amen, a mighty God, and we have the strength to be overcomers if we will cry out to him, and he will not turn a deaf ear to us. Sometimes we may even fail to realize our need of him. I think that happens quite a fair bit. We become so self-sufficient, we, we miss the fact that we do need him every day, every hour of our lives, and we need to learn to lift up our voice and cry out to him. So let's get back to Samson. Samson was a very unique man. He actually received a call to this unusual ministry before he was ever born. God spoke to his parents and told them of the amazing child who would soon enter their lives and he gave them special instruction 
about how this young boy was to be raised. Samson's mother was barren, but she didn't think she could cry out to God because of the sin that was in Israel and, uh, and the fact that they'd fallen into the arms of the enemy. She thought that any praying would be totally in vain because it would be rejected by God. However, even though God had said he would not listen to them and that they could pray to, uh, to idols who would not hear them, in this case, God read her heart and knew that he could use this woman to bear a mighty man of valour. And so this boy was born and uh, with a unique calling upon his life which he himself didn't even recognise. I think that we need to realise that here that probably Samson just looked like any other boy. We, we have pictures and statues of Samson with bulging muscles. But the fact was that Samson's strength was not in himself. It was in the power of God that would come upon him. And Samson, during his lifetime, he, uh, he failed many, many times. Many, many times. But he knew to call upon the Lord who would empower him. Perhaps God put Samson in certain difficult situations just to teach him the fact that he needed to call upon God. This strong man with weak resolve, it seems that he, he could be swayed with anything, he needed the Lord, though he did not realise it. So, it all started out when Samson was walking by a city called Timnah. There was a vineyard there and a lion leapt out of the vineyard without any weapon in his hand. He tore the animal to pieces as the Spirit of God rushed on him. That's a special word in the scripture. The Spirit of God rushed upon him exactly at the time that he most needed it. So, it was realised that Samson had easy access to the Spirit of God who caused him to have this great strength. Because Samson could not have done that in his own strength. Maybe he thought, though, that, wow, I have this strength and God can give me this strength. But there's a possibility, and I think it's probably fairly true, that he thought he could do this without having a relationship with God. In time, he met a young lady from Timna and planned to marry her. At that time, it was in the city of the Philistines. And the, he was under the eyes of the Philistines and, and thought he would be smart and give them a riddle. The riddle was, out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. You can read that in Judges chapter 14, verse 14. He then gave the Philistines, seven days to solve the riddle. There was a wager involved. After a week, the Philistines could not solve the riddle. So they threatened to burn Samson's fiance and her father's house down to burn it if they did, if they did not help him solve Sorry, if they did not, if, if they did not help the enemy solve the riddle. 
So under pressure, the unhappy bride-to-be accused Salmon, uh, Samson of hating her because they disclosed, have to disclose the secret. And so, I, I, I would suspect that she hated Samson for putting her in this position. The sweetness of this wedding feast was ruined because they knew the answer to the riddle and now Samson owed his enemies the wager. Once again, the Spirit of the Lord fell upon Samson, giving him great strength, and he went out and killed 30 Philistines to provide the garments for his wager. In life, we often feel like this, and we desire teach people a lesson, to get even. But may I say that even though this example is in the Bible, violence is not the remedy, no matter how much we may justify using force. Through prayer and fasting, we are empowered by God and will emerge victorious. We also have the Word of God. We trust in God, he will give us the power not only to overcome, but to face the situation. God has power to deliver, even when we feel overpowered by those who oppose us. Many times, rather than crying out for retribution, we should ask God to change our attitude. Because when our attitude changes, other people's attitude will change. I cannot have help to think about social media in these days, how, how many people go to social media to vent their grievances against others. And, uh, and this is not the right way to do it. Certainly not the right way for Christians to deal with their problems. It's between he and thee alone. And if you're not going to do that, just pray for your enemy. So Samson continually found himself needing God's help. Strangely enough, he had an unusual relationship with the Philistines. They were both his friends at times, and then his foes. So when Samson found out about the wedding feast, his bride had actually given Sorry, his, his bride's father had actually given her away to somebody else and was now offering uh, the bride's daughter to marry Samson. Samson was not happy with this younger lady or the offer. He felt so spurned that he sought out to hurt with revenge. And I think we all know the story, this is the point when we read that Samson caught 300 foxes, tied their tails together with firebrands. Now he didn't light the fox's tails on fire, but he tied the firebrand to their tails and set them loose in the Philistines' fields. When the Philistines identified who had done this and who had destroyed their crops. They returned to the former fiancé's house and burnt it to the ground, killing the woman and the father whom he loved. Samson was enraged. And the Bible says that he struck the Philistines down, hip and thigh with a great slaughter. Hip and thigh means that he was absolutely merciless because they had not shown any mercy at all 
So he struck them down, hip and thigh. Well, what was it that he struck them down with, hip and thigh? He found the jaw of an ass. And he went for it. One, sorry, I think 1,000 people fell that day. The surviving Philistines knew they were far from danger. They knew that unless they caught Samson and did something about this, there was going to be a continuing problem. So they went to Lehi, where uh, people in the tribe of Judah lived, and uh, seeking after Samson. I think out of the fear, out of fear, the people in the tribe of Judah there uh, decided to capture Samson themselves. So they found him hiding in the rocky cliffs of the hill. When they found him, they said, the Philistines want you. And we want to bind you up and take you to the Philistines. This was quite a bold move. Samson agreed. But he said, provided you promise that you will not kill me yourselves. We read about that in Judges 15, 11 to 13. After being taken to the Philistines, once again, the Spirit of God came upon Samson with a great rush. His arms became like flax that caught fire, melting the bonds that held him. Though Samson usually fought barehanded, now he chose the jawbone of a donkey. And I just realised I made a mistake because before he actually killed him with his, his bare hands. But here he takes the jawbone of a donkey, killing a thousand of the enemy with the jawbone. Three, th sorry, three, a thousand of the enemy with a jawbone. I think you better read this text and pick up on little errors maybe I've made. Despite achieving a fantastic victory, which was very, very tiring, Samson realised he still needed God because he feared that he was about to die of intense thirst. So he cried out to God, as we read to begin with. He said, Will you allow me to die of thirst and fall into the hands of my enemy, giving them victory? And at that time, God miraculously provided Samson with much-needed water from the spring, a spring that came forth out of that jawbone. What a miraculous thing. Although Samson's parents did not cry out to the Lord asking for a child, God now was giving Israel a, an indication that he was willing to hear them, and he did hear them. We must cry out to the Lord in our times of need as well. Sometimes we may achieve a great spiritual victory only to discover how costly it has been to us. We may feel burnt out. We may need to rest. Like Samson, we must call upon the name, the name of the Lord to give us strength. Of course, sometimes we make mistakes, assuming we are stronger than what we really are, depending upon our own strength. But we're never so mighty to be as great as the Almighty. At times, 
We fail to call on the Lord because we feel that we are weak and we lack faith. When you feel like you lack faith, that's the time to have faith. That's the time to turn around and say, Lord, I'm trusting in you. Gather everything together in your being to be able to say to the Lord with meaning, I want to trust you, God. I want to have faith in you. Then other times we feel shame for sin, knowing that we've neglected God. We feel, I don't deserve God's mercy. However, cry out to him. If we feel shame, cry out to him and repent. Even if we have not served God as we should, we can still come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We read that in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. No matter our situation, we can always, always call upon the Lord. Do not listen to Satan's lie to tell you you are unworthy. If you are a child of God, he will hear you. There's another lesson in this story of Samson. Like Samson, we may choose to use the promises of God for something that is less than what he intended. When Sam, while Samson found victory and thirst quenching salvation in the unconventional way that God gave him the victory, he still embraced his God and called upon the Lord. And yet we also know that in the end he's mentioned in the book of faith in Hebrews. That's probably because at the end of his life he became a great man of faith. We can turn to the Bible and read many, many stories of which we should and apply them to our lives. Commit ourselves, but never, ever use the power of God for our own personal convenience, temporary convenience, that is. If God's power is going to reveal himself in our lives, it should be a permanent thing, it's not just a prop, not something temporary. As I finish, I just want to read a story which I wrote down. It's actually uh, a true story because I, I knew this man. This man was the son of a great preacher. He felt the call of God on his life and desired to go to Bible school. As an evangelist, God had bestowed on him a personality that was a magnet to the unsaved. For a short period of time, God was able to use him with his ability to convincingly preach the gospel, drawing many people to seek after God. Yes, he was exceedingly successful. During this time, as an evangelist, he decided to take up a part-time job as a salesman. He found by utilising the gift that God had given him, he could use the same techniques to convince people to buy his wares. In time, he left preaching, he left preaching the gospel and amassed a financial fortune from those skills which God had given him. A 
Eventually, he totally drifted away from God. This is a true story. Very, very sad. This was an example of a man who had, was gifted by God. In the end, he used those gifts for his own purpose and turned away from God. This is a lesson for every one of us because every one of us are gifted in certain ways. Be careful not to use them for your own end. There's a lot in this story. I ask you to go back and read the account. Please forgive me for my brief uh, error there at that stage, but you can read exactly how it was in the scripture. I challenge you, let God use you. And you use the gifts that God has given you. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you're such a wonderful God, a God of mercy. Lord, you know our weaknesses, you know our frailties. And we pray right now that you would strengthen us. Help us to know, Lord, that the power of your Spirit in us is there to glorify your name, not for any glory of our, of our own, and Lord, just as Samson had this great gift, Lord, use us, we pray, but keep us from trying to think that we are the factor and continually remind us that you are the factor that empowers us. We ask this in Jesus' name.